Hello there, drummers and other creatures. Uh, I am here today, very excited to speak to a Nigerian drummer called um, Michael Oloyade. Have I got that right? Yes. I've got it near enough. And um, I, I discovered his work in particular since he's written a book on Afrobeat. And uh, anybody who watches my channel would know that I'm interested in the topic. And uh, the book's absolutely fantastic. I've been really enjoying learning stuff uh, using this book. Uh, I've, I've been doing my own exploration into the style and, and having uh, an experienced Afrobeat drummer um, write out a bunch of standard grooves and some technical exercises as well. It's been a fantastic opportunity to sort of deepen my understanding of the music. Hello, Michael. How are you? I'm very well. And uh, I, guess, I guess the first question is um, sort of what led you to create a book about Afrobeat and, and how's it going with that? Okay, yeah. Uh, the idea came, I think, about uh, roughly 12 years ago. And I... I had a bunch of drum instructional books and uh, stylistic books in my library. And each time I traveled, uh, there was one particular occasion. I was in the US, uh, I think it was 2009. I was there for a blues and jazz festival. And uh, somebody saw me in the park. I was like, oh, you, you're from Africa? I said, yeah. Oh, do you know Sonia Day? Sonia Day? Do you know fella? And and I was like, oh, there are lots of people in the Western world who are familiar with uh, Sonia the fella. And I was in the US playing jazz and blues, not playing mm -hmm. African music. So I was like, oh, people want to identify with where I'm from, despite the fact that I'm in their country. They want to identify with where I'm from through music. And I was like, I have a bunch of books written by uh, legendary drummers, but I realized that African art form, especially Nigerian uh, uh, style of drumming, is not being documented. And the only way we could like share it with every other person in the world is to document it and have it institutionalized in a way. And the one of the fastest or the simplest ways of doing that is writing a book. Uh, I remember that back then there are Latin books, books on Latin drumming, on um, books on Afro-Cuban drumming. Mm -hmm. uh, even back then we have uh, books on uh, Indian style of drumming and the likes. So I was like, I went googling, and all I could find was maybe history book about Afrobeat, about the life of Tony Allen. Uh, maybe uh, drummers, a few drummers here and there. YouTube wasn't a big thing back then. So a few drummers were like, oh, maybe grooves on Afrobeat and the likes. There wasn't really any formal book uh, on Afrobeat uh, back then. So I was like, okay, yeah. So I, I, at about that time, I think it was 2010, I visited my sister in Canada. So it was in the winter, so I couldn't go out that much. So I that was when I started like scribbling things. I I got a, a a plain sheet of paper. I started scribbling, okay, the uh content, uh intro, uh sectionalizing the book. Then I I think in, in the space of 30 days, I listened to a bunch of Afrobeat uh songs. Yes, mm -hmm. prior to that, I, I've been I've been listening to Afrobeat. I've played in Afrobeat bands. I play with uh, uh, Ayetoro. Ayetoro. Uh, I, I I play with him quite for I think about four or five years. I've been in various uh, bands. So, but I've had Afrobeat music all around me from mm -hmm. Fela, uh, Orlando Julius, even the derivatives of Afrobeat, Afro Juju. Uh, Shino Peters and like then uh, Sonia Ade, whose music is actually Juju. But if you listen to some of the beats played, especially in some of his album from the 80s, you realize that they're actually playing Afrobeat grooves, basically. Okay, Afro yeah. And so, so I did a bunch of listening and I was like, okay, yeah, I started writing out grooves. Started writing our grooves. I read about Tony Allen, read about the other drummers. The unfortunate thing is in, in Nigeria, there's really no proper documentation of, of drummers who have 
like contributed to Afrobeat style of drumming. So naturally, everybody says Tony Allen, Tony Allen. Yes, Tony Allen is like a pioneer. It's like it was it was one of the he, he innovated, he reinvented Afrobeat. You understand? So that was how the book started. The idea was meant. I need to put it in 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 some form of uh. Uh, in some form where people can read and wherever you are in the world, you can pick the book and you can interpret, you can play some of the groups, the groups in, in the book. So that was where the idea for uh, writing the book came from. And I think at, at, at that time, I even encouraged some of my uh, musicians, friends, like bass players, guitarists, like, oh, you could do something on Afrobeats, uh, mm. African uh, bass, Nigerian bass style of uh, uh, style of bass playing. And I told a few of them, yeah, some some took it to heart. Up to now, some haven't done anything about it. And that was what led to, to the Afrobeat drumming book. Yeah, it would be cool to see some some sort of parallel books about uh, bass yeah. and guitar playing for Afrobeat. And uh, yeah, it's true. I, f- I find myself, I feel like a little bit maybe uh, you can get stuck into focusing on Tony Allen because because Tony Allen with Fela Kuti, they were so seminal in inventing this style of music. Mm-hmm. And then when, when um, you know, I was looking for other, I mean, originally I came to Afrobeat from a, a London-based band that I'd come across that was Afrobeat and I was listening to their grooves. And then, then I sort of came and, and realized there was the Fela and Tony Allen and all of this. And I've been very lucky. I've, I've seen Tony Allen play live a bunch of times in London. And yeah. And then I've been looking for like, okay, who are the other drummers that have kind of been influenced by that? And who are the other acts as well that play a similar style of music? And and you're right. It's not all that easy to find. Um, there's obviously Anti Ballas in the United States. Uh, <laughs> Very famously, yeah. um, there's a Brazilian band called Abayomi. There's New and Afrobeat from Chile, I yeah, think. New, yes. Um, some really good uh, bands. Like that. Uh, Ebo Taylor, I know, is is for, sort of from olden days as well, from that sort of period. Um, but yeah, I, I'm familiar with Sunny. I saw Sunny a day years ago as well. Um, but yeah, I always thought of that as slightly different. And then when you look up Afrobeat music, there's also a sort of a world of sort of electronic sort of dance music that, that isn't really the same sort of thing that I think is called Afro beats maybe, but Afro I don't know if they're. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So are, are they, I mean, you, you've got a band called native brains and again, you're playing music in that sort of ilk as well. Um, but yeah, maybe before, let me do the thing. Cause I forgot to do the kind of showing off the book thing. Cause I've got a copy of your book and it's starting to get a little bit battered actually, cause I've been right. using it so much. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was going to ask you maybe if you could sort of give a little rundown of how the book works. There are, there are two main sections of it. Uh, yes. The first one is coordination exercises, yes. and um, it's it's a sort of very clearly laid out. But there's 34 basic groove exercises between the bass drum and the snare, with just yes. eighths on the hi hat, and then you've got like 26 hi hat patterns, and yes. then there's another selection of ride and hi hat foot patterns that go with that. Uh, I think I did a, a, a rough calculation. There's something like 800 to 1,000 combinations of stuff you could work through here. And I've been working through this section of the book. And so that's that, that first section of the book is the bit I would maybe call donkey work a little bit, you know, where you're really trying to develop your coordination exercises. And it reminds me of um, sort of something like stick control, obviously in not in the same flavor, but in the sense of like being a series of exercises that help to develop coordination obviously and then the next part of the book you've got the grooves i can't yeah. remember how many grooves there were but there these are all the um different patterns that i i assume that you researched during that cold canada winter and um again they're all really really fun to play every groove has a bunch of variations some of them uh have got some two bar uh variations as well as just single bar uh patterns and obviously then you can then combine those i guess with all the uh different the right possibilities you can get from the coordination so yeah so what's what how would you suggest people approach this book okay uh it's flexible i i would always stay on the side of flexibility if you really want to go through the coordination section you could and if you want to jump straight into the group section you could uh some some people use this book as a resource material oh i need a groove for a song Okay, they can walk through a few grooves, check them out. Oh, this might fit. But for for a drummer, I would actually recommend, depending on the level of uh, the drummer, if it's a beginner, I would definitely recommend for the drummer to go through the coordination exercises 
and really get those uh, worked out. But if you're an advanced drummer or an inter intermediate drummer and you've done some form of system, use some form of system, drum system book, you could skip uh, that part. But, uh, but at the same time, I would still recommend you check out some of the, especially the right cymbal pattern. Because if you listen to a lot of, a lot of Tony Allen's playing, it's not a straight eight note pattern. There are lots of uh, dotted eight notes that are uh, 16th notes and and the combination of, of such. So it's not really a straight eight note or you you accent your the cup of your ride on the upbeat. It's not upbeat or you play it on the downbeat. There are some accents, some it's on the edge of the profile of the right cymbal. So, and basically Afrobeat, it's more about the feel. So you can you can if if you can walk through the coordination exercises and and kind of play it like a mechanical like some some sort of uh, warm up exercises. I would encourage you to anyone who's going to walk through the coordination process to see it as some form of of groove and put mm -hmm. some some form of live uh, dynamics and uh, pulse to the exercises because. By the time you play it, like oh, it's it, it, it's just an exercise. It becomes monotonous and it transfers into your playing. For example, yeah, sometimes those kind of things can be. Yes, yes. So, for example, if you're playing for one of the exercises, uh, uh, let's for example, uh, doubles. You're playing two notes on the key, two notes on the snare drum. It go. You could play it as a straight sixteenth note, but if you play it as a as a beat, as a groove. It could actually sound like, <laughs> and that alone is Afrobeat. You understand? You yeah. can put a bass line on it, and it's it's you you're grooving. You understand? Then the I hat pattern where you open your I hat or where you accent on the right symbol now brings everything together. Those become the nuances that makes Afrobeat what what it is. Oftentimes, when people say Afrobeat, there's a, a basic, especially in Nigeria, there's a basic pattern that comes to mind. And the reason why I said, especially in Nigeria, uh, it might sound funny uh, because Afrobeat is uh, synonymous to Nigeria. So you might feel oh, every drummer in Nigeria should be able to play Afrobeat, should know Afrobeat. No, the reverse is the case. Presently in Nigeria, uh, we have more church drummers, gospel drummers than African drummers. So if you meet an average drummer on the street. Oh, do you know Afrobeat? Play Afrobeat. What they will play is it? Uh, okay, that's like the stereotype. Exactly. Uh, Afrobeat, but, yeah. But there's so many, so many different uh, Afrobeat pattern. And as a matter of fact, Afrobeat grooves, uh, there's really not one particular. You could make any beat an Afrobeat groove, depending on how you approach it. If you approach it the right way, you understand it, it could yeah. become uh an afrobeat groove and when you do when you apply certain things the feel the pause the nuances where you open your high hat the way you 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 strike the drum it it it, it, it creates a, a feel a flair that becomes yeah. so strong yeah i mean some of some of the characteristic things for me in terms of the drumming style are when i first um learned some beats especially with, with Tony Allen stuff, but you had the bass drum pattern on the one and the E, boom, 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 boom. And actually I, I found that amazingly difficult to do because in sort of like funk and R&B drumming, you'd be doing the R and the, the one, ba boom, da, and da, boom, ta, you know, so you'd have that sort of two sixteenths leading into the, uh, the downbeat. And so I found that really, really hard. Well, um, maybe I still do to some extent. And, and there was that feel. And then, um, for example, this is beautifully shown in the coordination exercises in your book, which is uh, there's a lot of patterns that mix the hi-hat through the bar. So you've got uh, four eighth notes and then uh, 16th note patterns as well. Yes. So instead of having just very consistent uh, um, and monotonous, I suppose, um, patterns, it mixes up the uh, the hi-hat eights and then broken 16th patterns and so on. And that makes it super challenging. And I, I, I was sort of thinking of... Uh, the way the the bog standard uh, ride pattern din did it din did it din did it din with the hi hat on the ands uh, played by the foot kind of gives you something like a straightened out jazz pattern. Yeah. Um, 
And but then you've got a, an element of coordination then that's because it's sixteenths rather than triplet subdivisions. You've got like one more option for every beat. In other words, the the possible uh, coordination uh, challenges are quite quite broad. And I think that's something that makes it really, really interesting. And I've been trying to work out a formula for using the famous uh, pages in syncopation instead of swing for Afrobeat. And I think I came up with an idea for oh, that, wow. that would make it work. But um, yeah, so um, yeah. So what, what the things, let, let's say um, you've got people who are uh, maybe not that interested in Afrobeat. Are there still benefits to studying your book? I mean, I can think of a few, I suppose, but. Yes. Yeah, lots of benefits. Like I said, the coordination uh, uh, section actually cuts across uh, any style of music, uh, rock, uh, even funk. Like you mentioned earlier on, if you look at st stick control, some pattern are kind of similar to what you find on stick control book. And I tell people, I tell drummers that this stick control book, yes, it's meant for and uh, sticking patterns, but you could create grooves, you could create fuse you could create four-way coordination patterns out of that book same thing applies to the coordination section of of this book so then the groove section uh yes it might seem oh afrobeat is simple afrobeat but if you look at some of the grooves where you the i the i at opens it opens on the 16 notes ah one e and ah at times it opens on the on the e one e and most drummers are used to opening of the art on the one and on the hand. Yeah, it's so, really not. It's not simple. This stuff. I, I find it quite challenging. So all these playing three sixteen notes, and you need to open your, your the art as fast as possible. Yeah, the middle sixteen notes, and then close it again, isn't it? And close it before the third note. Yep. Then at times you open it and you make it like uh, last for uh, the the length of an eighth note. So. And the way the book, the groove section is, is structured is such a way that you have the basic groove, then you have, for some, you have variations. Uh, the variations documented is, in this book is just a guide. There could be 10, 20 different variations of just one groove by just changing the nuances where you open the hi-hat, the accent, even just changing the placement of the accent on the hi-hat, it changes the entire feel. Mm -hmm. And what the term is where you put certain accents is actually the music, not just you coming up. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like what this sound there. I'm going to try it out on this song. You just have to listen to, to the music. Uh, I remember working with, uh, uh, there was a time I, I was working with, uh, I don't know if you know, Lag Badger, the mask man. No. Okay, yeah. You can check him out. He is one of uh, uh, the artists that kind of took Afrobeat and merge it with Juju and came up with something really, really different and really, really fantastic. Uh, Lagbaja okay. is a mask. Where's the mask? So I, I want. Can you spell? Can you spell the name? Okay, L A G B A J A. L A G B A J A. Yes. I have you. Okay, I'll 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 add, I'll add a link to that. Cool. Okay, I'll ch I'll check him out. All right. So uh, there was a, a particular real se uh, section we had, and there was a particular album he did. I think it came out year 2000. There was no single drum set, no contemporary drum sets played on that album. I think three, he released three. Uh, it, then it was uh, cassettes. He released them on cassettes. So right. uh, there was no drumming, like conventional drum set playing on the album and so you had to create the pattern it was more of african drums shekere shakers and uh, agogo and various other things that made up the groove so and there was a particular reason and it was like okay one of the songs he wanted me to create a drum pattern and he called out a few he called my attention to a few things that yes listen to the bass line listen to the pause then create something out of it, then determine where the snare drum is going to land, where you feel the bass drum resonates the best in the bar. You know, so, so you I, have I, to I, interpret the sort of uh, percussion elements into a drum set part? You, you weren't being yes. too fanatical about it. It was more about your, your feel in interpreting that. Exactly. 
Exactly. So the placement of accents, placement of bass drum, there's, there's so many Afrobeat grooves that start with the snare. That start with the snare drum. And yeah. I mean, again, that's a that's a fantastic challenge for people, I think, to, yes, to kind of stretch your abilities. With the bass drum. Most yeah. patterns start with the bass drum. Most patterns. So, but in Africa, yeah. So even the first groove in the book is is um which I think was um oh god, I think I heard it in a Fela song later on. I mean, oh, there it is. But it's yeah, I, and again, so that that's one of the things that I think would be good for for any drummer to work on because it, it kind of stretches your uh, sort of your body's preconceptions about beats being a bass thing, then snare, right. bass, snare, bass, snare. Having snare, 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 bass, or snare, bass, snare, bass. It kind of opens things up in a way that um, I remember the first time I, I played like one drop reggae where everything's upside down and you're going, don't play the one, don't play the one, don't play the one, and try not to mess that up. And uh, this also, you know, in a more uh, complex way, some of the time is uh, causing you to reevaluate how you think of grooves. And it's not just this thing where you have to smack the snare on two and four religiously. Uh, exactly. And again, this is something that that opens up possibilities that, that don't just apply to um, Afrobeat. Um, and, you know, people, yeah, in funk, I mean, you, you mentioned funk. It sounds to me like... Um, Fela Kuti's approach and Tony Allen's approach and, and the, the similar artists I found around that are kind of doing something sort of in, in a way they took James Brown and 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 upgraded it. Or I don't know, I guess in the theory that, uh, um, you know, black American music comes from Africa originally, not a theory, it's a fact, but, you know, where James Brown had that sort of, I don't know, yeah. manifested something a bit African feeling in his playing and then in Nigeria, they heard that and thought, oh, yeah, we could do this funk thing, but, you know, in, in a more original uh, Nigerian way. And they they created that sort of repetitive, um, I don't know, hypnotic type of playing. But, um, yeah, and, and you can do it anyway. You can hit the snare any way you like. Yes. Oh. yes. And uh, if you look at uh, the history uh, or what we have written down about Afrobeat, how it emerged, you realise that uh, funk... Uh, and at the same time, big band music played a major role. It was an influence on 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 Fela, and that could explain the reason why you you find a song that's fifteen minutes long, twenty minutes long. Yeah, you you have the instrument instrumentation, different improvisers. They play, then it starts singing, singing that the music climaxes, then it ends, and that could last for fifteen minutes, twenty yeah. minutes. You it's really so, good practice as well exactly, to play along to exactly, those consistently. Exactly. And yeah. if you if you now move away from Tony Allen, you realize that after Tony Allen left, the drummers that took over, because Tony Allen was more of a, a, a jazz, funky drummer, hence the nuances on his ride, the ride pattern that seemed to be similar to jazz, the iad patterns and the likes. So some of the other drummers that took over, yes, they were in that, they, they were good in their own right, but they had a different approach. So you find some, some patterns afterwards, like I think in the Egypt 80, the later recordings, they are quite stereotype and quite uh, 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 consistent from the beginning to the end. They're yeah, it's quite, not as fluid and busy as Tony Allen's fluid, playing. Like the way Tony Allen, because at times you listen to Tony Allen's playing and you realize that by the time you listen to the first two bars, on the third bar, something had changed. Yeah, <laughs> you it's can't nail bad. it down. Changing. You, you understand? It keeps changing. So now the idea is to be, for in my own opinion, to be a really good Afrobeat drummer, you need to listen to what's happening around you to know when to accent, to play louder on the snare, don't to bring it down. When you change your bass drum pattern, then you go back into the original kind of uh, template you're using for a particular song. Mm -hmm. So I, I think for any drummer, basically, it's, it's going to be a really good addition. Even the modern day Afrobeat, the derivative of Afrobeat that we have in Nigeria, which is Afrobeats, it's more of uh, the the dance all techno kind of, you have the four on four, four on the bass drum kind of pattern. And I think as a matter of fact, Femi Kuti, if you listen to his album, uh, Shocky Shocky album, then uh, the other one, Fight to Win. 
Is mm-hmm. it fight to win? Yeah. They were more of uh techno dance or kind of Afrobeats grooves. Yeah. Uh, for example, bang, bang, bang. There were more four on the floor, like dance or kind of. Yeah. It sounds, yeah, it's more like dance music. Sounds exactly. like so me, now, yeah. what we have now, the Afro beats that we have now, it's more or less like a slow down version of what Femi Kuti did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a slow down version. Then with the clave, the three, two clave most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it, it's not quite as exciting because it, because it's a bit, I mean, I, I'm not that much a fan of like computerized music because it's a little bit too consistent for my liking and, and so on. Um, so I'd like to ask you then maybe a little bit about your sort of origins as a drummer. And you said that you sort of, you thought about writing this book when you went to America as a blues musician. Yes. Um, did you sort of, um, in your earlier years, were you also somebody who was studying and playing sort of blues, gospel, whatever, you know, modern contemporary styles and then you came to afrobeat a little bit later or were you conscious of it from the um earlier part of your drumming uh journey well uh i i started playing drums from church i think at the age of 12 uh it was i started with the local drums that were called agbamole that's what we call it uh then there's another one a square shaped i would call that one uh samba a square mm-hmm. shaped uh a drum you put it in between your legs then mm-hmm. you play and I played the bell, the conventional bell. There's a way you hold, hold it and you play it. I played all of that. Then I remember back then, uh, those were the instruments we had in church. And at some point, the, the drum set was purchased. And I was in, in that same church at that time. And I tried my hands on. It was quite different. It felt really different because I was used to, used to playing drums with my bare hands and all of that. But I kind of like I liked it, and and growing up, I I remembered some part of it, and my parents also told me that anything I could find my hands on, I was playing. I was mm-hmm. spoon, brush, anything. <laughs> I was so it was quite easy for me to to morph into the uh, contemporary drum set. So then I left that church after the afterwards. But growing up, I had uncles who had. Uh, vinyl of Bella, Sonia De, Ebenezer Obe, uh, Anyela Omawura, uh, lots of uh, records, African Nigerian music. And I I listened to every one of them passively, in a way, passively. Yep. It was while I took like keen interest in drumming, and later that was like, oh, so I had listened to all of these things while growing up, passively, unconsciously. And at some point, so I became very conscious of, of Afrobeat, but it wasn't really Afrobeat that drew me closer to like that, drew my attention to drumming. I remember, I think I listened to, I, I, there was a program on the national TV back then that I, I think on every Saturday, they showed a uh, jazz uh, concert. Mm-hmm. And I think the, I, I watched at Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. And I was like, wow, I want to play like this. This was I, in the early days of your, your drumming career. Yes. I, at, at that time, I didn't even, even taken drumming quite seriously because in church, you play in church. It wasn't something I was, I wanted to make a career out of. I was like, oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, everybody plays drums. You In church, you play drums. They gave you clave. You're a singer. You, you know how to play clave and all of that. So, and that was how it started. And my, I, my interest grew over time. And, and when you started playing the drum set, did you take lessons with someone? Uh, initially I didn't, but I, my phone of my elder brother would move to a different church. My elder brother, for some reason, I don't, I had no idea where he learned how to play the drums. He's left handed and he was the drummer in the church. So I picked a few things passively by watching him. And afterwards, the bass player, uh, in that same church was a friend of my elder brother. Uh, his name is Chegu, and he was like, oh, okay, that's the drummer. I'm going to introduce you to a drummer. Uh, he plays for Femi Kuti, blah, blah, blah. Would you like to meet? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he took me, no, no, uh, no. Initially, he was going to introduce me to a different drummer. So we went to the drummer's church 
uh, I think his name is uh, Shola or something. He took me to his church. On getting to his church, we met another drummer who happened to be Tosi Aribisala, Femi Kuti's drummer. Ah, oh, okay. So he was playing. I think he just got back from uh, uh, an European tour or something like that. And so he came to the other drummer's church. I, I guess he came to worship there or something. So after service, he was playing something on the drums and I was blown away. And after I was done playing, the uh, my brother's friend who took me to that church was like, oh, so now let me take you to the drummer that I, I wanted to introduce you to. And I was like, no, I want to meet this other drummer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, and that was how I met Tosin Aribisala, who took me on... Uh, through the rudimental, the fundamentals. He showed me lots of fundamentals, uh, elements of drumming. He shared lots of books with me. Yet he would travel for like two, three months on tour with Femi Kuti. He would leave a book with me. Uh, I'll walk through the book. Whenever he came back, he would check, okay, you've done this correctly or you need to correct these and all of that. Mm -hmm. And that was how it started. And afterwards, after to see, there was a time he had to relocate to the US and he wasn't coming back to Nigeria. So he told me, oh, go to this studio, a cool remix. And there's another drummer there. His name is Wale Adeyemi. Talk to him. He's going to help you out. He's a fantastic drummer as well. He's going to show you one or two things. So I studied with him, uh, with uh, Wale Adeyemi. And after a while, I grew hungrier for, for more. Then I also started with uh, uh, this, uh, another drummer we call Papa Ray, Ray Giovi. I studied mm -hmm. with so over over the span of I think uh five, six years, I studied with different, different, different drummers uh during those times. Then I afterwards I yeah, I was playing gigs, playing in churches, playing different style of music I could or were available in, in Lagos at that time. Then at some point, uh a friend of mine who is a pianist was like, oh, there's this school, Muslim School of Music, uh, they're give, doing a scholarship, a two-year program. Would you like to? I was like, okay, I'm a drummer. I'm not a classical player and blah, blah, blah. So, well, I took the courage. I, I took the risk and I I went there. I was admitted. I, I got the scholarship. Oh, so I okay. of a, a classical performance. So I had to play the piano. I had to play piano pieces. I had to okay. learn harmony and a few other things. It's very, it's it's good to be able to play other instruments. Yeah. So I I did all of that. It was afterwards that, uh, I think from that same school, one of our lecturers who was uh who came from the U.S. an African American uh, uh, by the name of Karen Peterson. He, she heard us with, because we formed a band in school then and she heard us and it was like, oh, would you like to play at a festival? My mom is the founder of a festival, a jazz and blues festival and the likes. So that was how it all started. So five of us, we call ourselves the five wise men back then. So we, we went to the US, we played, I think three, we played two nights at the festivals. Then we also played some other college uh, appearances and the likes. Then it was at that point that I, I visited uh I went to visit my brother who lived then in Boston and Boston was where Berkeley College of Music was. Mm -hmm. So I visit, visited Berkeley, went on a campus tour and afterwards I was, I auditioned that same, that same week. I was like, Oh, I'd like to be here. So I auditioned. So I came back to Nigeria. I was given an admission and like, I went back to the U S to, to the US for, for the program. But unfortunately, I couldn't continue because of funds. I had to come back home to Nigeria. Then I went back for a summer program uh, in the US. So it was more of a jazz performance kind of uh, program that I did. I did in the it summer. It's really expensive to go to Berkeley, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, and so how's the, um, uh, what what's the sort of live music scene like in Lagos and, and in your environment in general? Is, is there quite a healthy uh, culture of live music and do, do you are you quite busy with your bands well in, in in lagos at the moment it number one lagos is quite saturated one mm -hmm. uh saturated with lots of musicians uh and secondly uh there are two popular style of music is that you play in a church or you play afro pop or the afro beats so and even the afro beats artists the uh, a lot of them are even using musicians in the diaspora, I guess, for some reason, maybe for travel purposes, visa issues and restrictions. 
uh, they're using bands like uh, the composers that are in the UK, some of these other bands. Uh, so, but in, in Lagos, most shows I do are more of uh, my own shows, like booking venues, doing shows in venues, doing lots of session session work. People send mm -hmm. stuff to me. I record in the studio. I send it back so to them. So where you are now, is that where if I employed you to do some recording for me, you're going to do it there? Is, is it your own space? Yes, in my own space. Yeah, own space. good. I mean, like watching your videos, the, the sound of the drums and the recording quality is amazing. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed watching all of that stuff. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. So, um, yeah, maybe that's a good place to, to wind this up. Have you um, got anything that you'd like to add that I didn't, sort of ask about or are there any extra things I'm, I'm thinking um i'd like to encourage people obviously to check out your book so also is there a sort of particular url we could go to to check out your stuff i'll stick the various links in the bottom uh of my video okay, yeah. uh, people could could check my stuff out on my website michaeloloide.com mm -hmm. uh they could also use linktree forward slash michaeloloide it should take them to different uh uh social media pages and and sites that i have my stores then on 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 afrobeat drumming uh aside walking through this book uh i think at the back there's there's a list of records that i recommended for people to a discography yeah for people to listen to so yeah, aside there's a good list of stuff there the coordination exercises and the grooves the grooves are just letters. They become life. It's like a language. So I would encourage people to actually take time to listen to, to uh, some of these records. It will give them a an idea of what it sounds like, what they feel, what it feels like. And and some people might be wondering, okay, yeah, it's just Afrobeat. I can't, uh, well, how does it apply? I'm a pop musician and the like. And over time, I've, real, I've seen so many pop artists infuse Afrobeat in their style in, in their in their songs uh i think there was one particular one that i had tony allen on it uh is it dave uh dave alban or david oh, alban. david alban yeah so so he's he's made some records with tony allen yes um yeah i was actually uh, i was actually uh and and he um did a guest slot on one of tony allen's last records as well and uh, he was supposed to turn up at a, a, a live show that Tony Allen was was doing, and he for some reason didn't show up, and Tony Allen wasn't too impressed. But um, yeah, he's worked with Damon Albarn. Um, yeah, so it's so worth checking I, out I, how. I, I, yes, I, I see a lot of people, a lot of artists using Afrobeat now. The Roots in the US, they use lots of Afrobeat elements. Uh, uh, Marcos Miller on one uh, on mm -hmm. a song I Life, in, I think in one of his previous album uh there was a particular song by uh was it uh this pop star uh one of the beyonce the group that had beyonce she did a song uh that actually they actually sampled one of fellas uh on slime so there are lots of songs out there that they're employing afro even a snacky poppy so it's been utilized in jazz music in mm -hmm. pop in rock in various styles of music so you might think oh don't you might think, oh, it's just Afrobeat, but it's it's finding its way in other art forms that will be very useful for a drummer to know how to play. And when you yeah. find it in such such a situation, it's a really untapped resource. I think of interesting patterns. It's an untapped resource of of a challenging coordination stuff to learn. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'd encourage every every drummer to take a look at this style of music, both from a technical point of view and from a point of view of learning a, a style and a, a very unique f feel well i guess unique in insofar as if, if you haven't been exposed to it before um yeah that's brilliant okay so everybody basically just buy buy this book and learn how to play some of the stuff oh there you go my camera's even focused on it buy this book and learn how to play all the grooves and then then get back to us um i was telling michael i'm i might try and do some shorts where i record some of the the grooves from his book that i'm playing he demonstrates, is it all of the, the grooves? Um, when you buy the book, you get a full audio download of all the, the grooves, yes. but also you can watch Michael uh, demonstrating at least, is it most of them or all of them? They're on your YouTube channel? It was just just a few, I think about seven of, seven of them, just seven. Okay. 
All right. So maybe I'll 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 do a do an effort to uh, add to that a little bit and see if I can you know do them justice. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for giving me your time today. It's been really fun talking to you. Um, yeah, I guess that sort of wraps that one up. Buy the yep. book. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching this. Bye-bye.